So we're here on the uh, show floor at Broadband World Forum in Amsterdam, and I'm here with uh, two of my colleagues from Heavy Reading, Graham Finney and Gabriel Brown. Uh, so Gabriel, you've made an observation here about um, different uh, investment levels in different parts of the world. Can you just tell us a bit about that? Yeah, so, you know, a Broadband World Forum, you know, in spite of the name, is, is primarily, I suppose, a, a European event. What's interesting now, I've seen uh, presentations or, or spoke with operators from, from the US, Australia, uh, parts of Asia, and they're all over here, as it were, telling a story about how they've made a bet, they've made a, a, taken a risk on making big investments, uh, but at the other end, as it were, they're getting the benefits of that in terms of, of revenue and greater profit margins. Right. So my question is really, why aren't we seeing uh, European operators making making the same bet and, and, and putting the money up. So Graham, do you think there are any particular reasons why there might be lower levels of risk taking in Europe? Uh, it certainly seems that way. I mean, if you look at the company like Verizon, they certainly took a risk when they built their uh, FIOS, Fibre to the Home Network. Uh, many people thought that it was a too big a risk, um, but they've come out shining from that um, investment. And in other parts of the, the world, we've also seen operators take a big uh, bet on FTTH. Uh, that's happening in China at the moment. In Australia, it's backed by the government, and the government's certainly involved in some of those initiatives. We're really not seeing that in Europe at the moment, and companies like BT, um, Deutsche Telekom seem very minded to, you know, mine the copper network for as long as possible yeah. and delay investment as long as possible, and their horizon is much more short term, I would say. Um, you know, FTTH is a long term bet. Everyone recognizes it's inevitable, and there's a strong argument for moving to it as, as quickly as possible because it's a very long you know, cycle. It's a 10 year at least program. Right. So, this whole idea of a, a catalyst for investment was brought up by Nelly Kroosh from the European Commission. And here's what she said We are at a crossroads for broadband. Where we end up depends on some tough political and investment decisions. Take the right turn and we will see the benefit for many decades to come. Take the wrong one and future generations will curse our missed opportunity. The last few years we have seen Europe slipping behind in productivity growth. We need to catch up, but how? So one of the other keynotes was from the CEO of KPN, and he noted that actually there's a, an issue in Europe about getting scale. There's like 150 operators in Europe, uh, whereas there's like three in China and you know two major tier ones or three, if you like, in North America. And here in Europe, if you're investing, you just don't have the, the scale to be able to get the return on investment you might get if you're Verizon. Do you think that's a reason? Is that a sort of fair assessment? Yeah, I, mean, I think uh, it's a, obviously a, a, an important point. I think some of that is a hangover from a, like a regulatory system which has tried to encourage facilities-based competition. Uh, and that what you end up with is four or five or half a dozen operators in a, in a small market. So you get this fragmentation and, and you don't get the scale benefits that, that, that you see elsewhere. Yeah, that's right. I think that's got to change uh, from a regulatory point of view and uh, you know, kind of financial investment. It's got to be consolidation, essentially. I think there has. I mean, certainly there's been some consolidation on the mobile side. You know, I mean, you've got some very large operators now who are, in principle, in a position to buy on a sort of transnational scale. Yeah. That's much less true in the um, fixed access business, which is still a very national business and it's still very fragmented. So it's certainly true that that creates difficulties in you know, building strong relationships with suppliers and getting the economies of scale. And I would say that is one of the factors which is holding Europe back. I'd also just note, though, just as a sort of a, a little bit of a note of caution, is that when you get Verizon and Comcast and these people who are speaking today uh, with a really good story to tell, um, what we're hearing from here is essentially we're hearing from the winners, those who are on a good streak and, and they're on a good run. We're not necessarily hearing from the third, fourth, fifth placed operator in, in these other markets. So, you know, there are, there are winners in Europe as well. And I think in, in almost every market, we're seeing a bit of a, a bifurcation of the market in that the top two operators are really pulling away. And they're the ones with the big groups who've, who've got the scale, who've got the technical resources and, and, and uh, the, like the consumer insight to really pull away from you know, the challenges. So you've got, you've got a bit of a, a division even in, within the European market. We're hearing about the winners here, 
Um, but I, I, I suspect, and you go back to those markets, for, for every winner there's a loser, as it were. Right. I think there's, there's one other thing that's worth emphasizing, and that is that there's a need for political and regulatory leadership in Europe at the national level. There's no question that the European Commission understands what's required and is trying to push for what's required. What's missing is the national initiative from you know, political and regulatory bodies to say we have to get more quickly to you know, 4G and to um, FTTH because it's in our national interest to do so. That's really what I think is missing in many countries. So I think it's fair to say that there's a lot of talk about these kind of things, but very little action in Europe in terms of making actual investments, taking risks and moving to that next stage to create, you know, what is supposed to be a, a digital Europe. That's right. I mean, just one thing, that, one other thing I would add is, you know, they have, the European Commission is trying to put together this Connecting Europe facility. Yeah. It's a very large sum of money which could actually make a difference. Um, you know, if that's successful, maybe that will start to move the needle. And so finally, Gabriel, you know, we all come to shows looking for new ideas, and new technologies, and I understand you've come across a real hot innovation here at the show. Can you tell us what that is? I can indeed, Ray. People are always asking me, you know, I'm an analyst, so it's like, what, what have you seen that's hot? What are the new services? How are operators doing with, with advanced services? Things like that. But actually, the, the, the biggest innovation I've seen at this show is name badges printed both sides. It's taken a million conference delegates and a hundred thousand events, but we've got there. So good news for people like you who want to be seen, but perhaps not such good news for those of us who want to go anonymously around the show floor and find out what's going on. Guys, thank you very much for joining today. Thank you. Thanks, Ray.